The objective of this video is to introduce Le Chatelier's principle and apply Le Chatelier's principle to some chemical reactions. Le Chatelier's principle is defined as if a chemical system at equilibrium experiences a change in concentration, temperature, or volume, the equilibrium shifts to counteract the imposed change. I have an animation I'd like to show you to reinforce that idea. Here are two tanks filled with water connected by a tube underneath them each. Now we're going to add and subtract water from both sides. And there's a narrator that will explain what is going on. Let's take a listen. When we add water to the tank on the left, the water in the tank on the right moves up, and that on the left moves down. The water moves from left to right, so we say that equilibrium shifts to the right, as it would if we added more reactants to a reversible chemical system. Now let's add water to the right side. And now that you've seen that, predict what would happen if we're adding water onto the right side. Adding water to the right tank causes the water of the left tank to rise as water moves from the right tank to the left. Equilibrium in the system shifts to the left as it would if we added product to a reversible reaction. Well, it takes some water away from the tank on the right. Removing water from the right tank lowers the water level of the left tank as water moves from left to right to regain an equilibrium. The equilibrium shifts to the right as it would in a reversible chemical reaction if we subtracted product from the system. Now let's remove water from the left tank. Removing water from the left tank causes water to move from the right tank to the left. Equilibrium shifts to the left, as it does in a reversible chemical system when we reduce the quantity of the reactants. Although this animation may be somewhat specific to this one particular stress of changes in concentration of reactant or product, I still think it's useful to understand the overall principle or idea of Le Chatelier's principle. The important thing to keep in mind is that when disturbing a chemical reaction at equilibrium in either of these three ways, the reaction will respond to the change. And the Chatelier's principle is a great way to predict how the chemical reaction will respond to the particular change. So let's look at some specific examples to reactions where concentration, temperature, and volume are changing. In this chemical reaction predict the shift in equilibrium if additional NOBR is added. Identify NOBR as reactant. Now if we add more NOBR, will the reaction shift to the right or to the left to compensate for the additional NOBR? Well, if you predict it to the right, you'd be correct. In this chemical reaction, predict the shift in equilibrium if NOBR is added. So if we were to add additional NOBR to this reaction, we need to realize that it's a reactant and we're going to increase the concentration of the left side of the reaction. And that would cause a shift in equilibrium temporarily to the right. Now predict what would happen if we add NO to this reaction system. 
Well, NL is a product, and your prediction would be shift to the left. The system would temporarily shift to the left to account for the additional NO. Now predict the shift if BR2, bromine, is removed. Taking some bromine out, what do you think would happen? Shift to the right. And finally, predict what would happen if NOBR is removed. Well, NOBR is a reactant, and if we remove some of that, the equilibrium would temporarily shift to the left. So far we looked at chemical reactions of the Schatler's principle where we've been changing the concentrations of either product or reactant. Now I'll consider changing the temperature. Here's a chemical reaction and there's some information about the heat of the chemical reaction. And delta H is a positive 181 kilojoules. Now positive delta H implies end or exothermic reactions. It's an endothermic reaction. So one way to help figure out heat transfer and Le Chatelier's principle is to actually write the word heat somewhere in the chemical equation. Because this is endothermic, I'm going to write the word heat on the left. Now we could address what would happen if we increase or decrease the temperature. First, let's talk about what if we were to increase the temperature. Imagine if this reaction were in a beaker and we were to put it under a flame. We would heat it up that way. Well, if we would heat it up, we would be adding more heat to the system. And heat's on the left side, so the reaction would shift to the right. Now, in the second case, let's remove heat. Let's decrease the temperature. Imagine if we were to put ice around the beaker. It would cool down the environment around the reaction. Well, then we would be removing heat, taking heat away from the system. And that would cause the reaction to shift to the left. Here's another chemical reaction, given the delta H. What I'd like you to do is predict the shift in equilibrium for the two cases. If we increase the temperature, and then also if we decrease the temperature. Pause the video, predict what would happen in those two cases, and come back and check your answer. In this case, is an exothermic reaction, so the heat term goes on the right side of the equation. And if we were to increase the temperature, we would be adding heat to the right side, and, and then that would cause a shift to the left. If we were to decrease the temperature, on the other hand, we would be removing heat, taking heat away from the right side, Therefore, we cause a shift to the right. Now, I'd like to consider the Chatelier's principle in molecules in the gas phase when we increase or decrease the volume of the container that holds the gas molecules. I'd like to introduce that using this animation. I'll point out a few things here. The reaction is between NO2 and N2O4. 
Now there are two molecules of NO2 for every one molecule of N2O4. Now this could be a little tricky predicting what would occur if we change volumes. The thing to keep in mind here is the number of gas molecules. Keep track of the number of gas molecules. So let's listen to the animation and see what occurs. A sealed flask contains three molecules of nitrogen dioxide for every one of dinitrogen tetroxide, and the system is at equilibrium. If we then transfer the mixture to a flask with a smaller volume, NO2 molecules convert to N2O4 molecules, resulting in a net decrease in the number of molecules. In this way, the system compensates for the decrease in volume by a decrease in gas pressure. So what occurred when the volume was decreased was the number of N2O4 molecules increased. If that occurs, that means the total number of molecules in that volume has decreased. So what chemical reactions will do when volume changes occur, they'll look to either increase or decrease the number of gas molecules depending on the space they're in. If the reaction senses that there's a decrease in space, the reaction will shift towards the side that will produce less molecules. If the reaction senses that there's an increase in space, the reaction will shift to the side that will increase the number of molecules. In this, cr in this case, again, the space was decreased, so the molecules shifted, so the reaction shifted to the right, where there is a less, where a fewer production of gas molecules would be produced. Because if the reaction shifted to the left, there will be twice as many gas molecules produced. Now remember about the ideal gas law. Size of the individual gas molecules do not matter. In this case, it's the quantity of gas molecules. And if the reaction were to shift to the left, a larger quantity of gas molecules would be produced. Let's try some examples to reinforce these ideas. I'll consider this reaction if we increase or decrease the volume. But the way I'm going to approach this is consider the total number of gas molecules on either side of the chemical equation. Now, there's a total of two molecules on the left side, and there's a total of one on the right. First case is, what if the volume were to increase, meaning we have a larger space? The more space, the more molecules we could fit. Well, that would cause a shift to the left. The second, second case, if the volume is decreased, we have less space to fit molecules. So, mo so the reaction is going to shift to the right. I'll give you a couple examples that you could try. So predict for this reaction what would occur if we would increase the volume and also decrease the volume. Pause the video, give it some thought, come back and check your answer. Well, in this case, we have two gas molecules on the left and three gas molecules on the right. And if we were to increase the volume, we would have more space for the gas molecules. So the reaction would shift to the right, producing more molecules for that larger space. If we were to decrease the volume, the reaction would shift to the left, producing less molecules for that lesser amount of space. Here's another one for you to try. Again, predict if the volume were to increase and if the volume were to decrease. In this case, there would be no shift in equilibrium if we change the volume because there are equal number of gas molecules on both sides of the equation.
And finally, here's a reaction where we have mixed phases of reactant and products. We have solid, we have aqueous, aqueous, and a gas. Solid is simply just a solid material. Aqueous, remember, is something dissolved in water. And of course, you have hydrogen gas here. So I want you to predict what would happen in both cases. If we increase the volume, and then if we decrease the volume. In this case, we have zero gas molecules on the left and one gas molecule on the right. So if we increase the volume, the reaction would shift to the right, producing more gas molecules. If we decrease the volume, the reaction would shift to the left, decreasing the number of gas molecules.